Today, I'm taking a look at the Polar Ignite. Four point nine six miles, thirteen minutes, twenty six seconds per mile, one hundred and fifty beats per minute, and six hundred forty feet of vertical running here in the Arizona hills and taking the Polar Ignite watch with me for my run. Sorry that there isn't any running footage or there isn't a lot of running footage with me today. Uh, it's unusual, but we're getting some strange weather here in Phoenix. I've been coming out here for a couple of years for this particular work conference and the running is usually just absolutely phenomenal. This year though, it's gonna rain or be extremely cloudy with the chance of rain the entire time I'm here. Add on top of that is the fact that uh, I forgot to pack a headlamp today. And so uh, normally the time that I'm running, the sun is up, especially as I get a little bit higher up into the hills. Uh, the sun definitely starts peeking over the horizon, so I get a little bit more natural light anyway. And I forgot to pack a headlamp. so. Today's run was pretty much just pitch black because of the fact that it was raining and sometimes it was raining really hard. It was actually really spooky at certain times during the run. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, about what it was like to run in the rain, in a desert, in rocking conditions when you can't see. But I do wanna to get to the review of the Polar Ignite. But before I do that, I do also wanna go over some disclosures. This is a watch that was sent to me for the purpose of review and it's actually a loaner. Uh, it's not a brand new watch. It came to me with just the box and a charger itself. And I actually had to run some updates on it when I received it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, how it affected my testing. But in either event, I didn't uh, receive the watch for free. I won't be keeping it. Um, and no one's paying me to use this watch or to make this video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my thoughts or my data before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Polar Ignite. Now this is an entry level watch from Polar. It's $229 on the website right now. I'm not sure if you can get it for cheaper because it's been out for a little bit now. And it's very much like the Polar Vantage V in terms of the user interface that uh, I've had and the experience I have with that much more expensive watch. Except the two main differences for this watch are that it's a lot lighter and thinner, uh, as much smaller package overall but it only has one button instead of the five buttons that are on the Polar Vantage V and it has a touchscreen IPS display. And this display is just absolutely beautiful. I love the display. Uh, it actually invites you to touch it because the colors are so vibrant and I've been really enjoying looking at the display and I wish that all of my GPS watches could look like this. The only thing that really even comes close to that is if you're running with an Apple watch where it has a, just a beautiful display to look at uh, and interface with. But on the other hand, I'm personally a big fan of having lots of buttons on a watch like on the Polar Vantage V um, because a lot, of, a lot of times in the winter, I'm running with gloves on or if I'm just doing workouts, I don't want to interface with like a touch screen. I want to be able to click on a button and have very clear ideas of what's going to happen, exactly what's going to happen whenever I press a button, whether it's taking a lap, pausing it because I'm stopped at an intersection waiting for the traffic signal. I don't want to accidentally stop recording an activity during the middle of a run, and I don't want to accidentally discard any data. Now, I didn't have any of those problems with this particular watch, and for the most part, I got really lucky, and on the days that I was using this watch, it really wasn't too cold, so I didn't mind having to like take my glove off to resume an activity after pausing it. So for example, with this watch, with just the regular touch interface and the one button, when I pause an activity, I can just hit the one button and it's fine. Uh, but to resume it, I have to touch the screen. And sometimes, you know, if you're running and touching a screen at the same time, sometimes like there's a little bit of wobble, kind of like two jets refueling midair. And you have to, it's hard to actually like make it do what you want it to do. So I had a little bit of difficulty with that, but for the most part, I was able to get it done. 
Now, the other kind of livability issue that I have with this watch is that sometimes when I lift my wrist up, it's not giving me the time when I want it to. So it, as it has this beautiful display, but that display is a battery hog and it's really just sucking the life out of this watch. To manage that, uh, the watch goes to sleep pretty aggressively. And even just trying to film B-roll of this watch, I ran into an issue of like, it just doesn't stay on long enough. For in terms of me like using the watch and getting data from it, didn't have a problem because I'm usually touching it or, or, or ro rolling through menus. And so it's not a problem there. But in terms of it, how long does it just stay on? I think it could stay on a little bit longer. Now, fortunately, there's an always on mode that you could turn on for activity. So like while you're running, so you don't have to fight it. But I also didn't really find that it was too much of a problem. For the most part, I was able to, even with the aggressive battery life management and the screen off management that the watch has, I was able for the most part to be able to see all the data that I wanted to, uh, usually on the first or if not the first, the second time that I lifted the watch up to kind of check out what was going on. So during an activity, great. During like just regular life, I always found myself like multiple times having to like lift up my wrist. The band that's on this is pretty comfortable. It's just like this soft rubber material. Uh, the claspy part, uh, this metal part, seems like a little bit fragile, a little bit cheap, um, but I do think that you can replace out the bands and interchange them relatively easily. So not a huge deal. Uh, so far, I haven't had any problems with it. And what's nice about the Ignite is that it seems to be just like the regular watch band sizes. And it's not like the Polar Vantage V where it's like a very specific type of wrist strap that I don't think I can really replace the wrist straps on this watch. But on this one, I certainly can't switch it up, especially if I want to do something besides this like super bright yellow and do something a little bit more discreet so I can wear it all day. So overall living with the Polar Ignite has been pretty good. The battery life does take a hit because you've got that really beautiful screen that's sucking up all the power, uh, but it still lasts a lot longer than say an Apple Watch would. You're not getting all the functionality of an Apple Watch. You're getting the functionality of a Polar Watch and it feels very much like a Polar Watch there, but the screen is just really beautiful to look at and I, I really wish all the Polars could have this screen just because I love the way it looks so much. Maybe it's just me and my eyes are starting to go. I really appreciate super, super bright watch faces to be able to look at whether I'm running or whether I'm just living uh, outside of the run. I really want things to be brighter and more crisp uh, and I love the brightness and crispness of this Polar Ignite. But that being said, let's now talk about the data. And what I wanna do is um, on a couple of runs, I either took the Polar Ignite by itself or I ran with the Polar Ignite with the Vantage V just as a comparison point, just to have a different watch taking GPS or other pace and distance information and to have it as a comparison point. But before we get into the data itself, I do wanna say that a limitation of the Polar Ignite is that I couldn't get it to connect with my Stride Foot Pod. I don't know if there's just something I did wrong, but no matter what I did, I could literally have the Stride Foot Pod sitting next to the watch and it just wouldn't see it. Uh, I could try like syncing it or connecting it the regular way, which let's leave it on my shoe and just kind of wait for the watch to find it. It would never find it. So I don't know if it can't or it won't, but I couldn't get the Stride foot pod to connect to it. So some of the testing I did with the Ignite by itself, some of the testing I did the Ignite with my Polar heart rate monitor, the OH1 uh, optical sensor that goes on the forearm. And I compared that to the Vantage V. When I was comparing it to the Vantage V, the Vantage V had the heart rate monitor and the foot pod attached to it. So running a much more expensive setup for the comparison test, but I think that's a much more accurate way of looking at the data and comparing it to this watch. So it should have a pretty good kind of baseline to compare to. Now, the first thing that I'll take a look at is the heart rate. And the heart rate on this watch did pretty much what I would expect a wrist heart rate monitor to do, whether it's the Vantage V, the Polar Ignite, a Garmin watch, an Apple watch, all wrist-based heart rate monitors, I think are great for sleep tracking, your day-to-day -day kind of stress levels, your heart rate levels. But when it comes to actual running, I feel like a wrist-based heart rate monitor is always going to over-report compared to an external heart rate monitor, whether it's a chest strap or whether it's a forearm monitor like the Polar OH1. And so what we have here is there are periods where uh, the, Polar Ignite is really over-reporting my heart rate when I'm working hard. Uh, and so I'm in the 170s quite a bit on this particular run, but the external heart rate monitor is giving me readings that are 
more in line with what I was feeling at the time, which is like heart rates in the 150s. Uh, towards the higher elevations, it definitely got a little bit higher, 158, almost into the 160s. And then certain points where I'm either resting, i.e. I was lost on the trail in the dark, um, or when I was coming downhill, uh, that's usually when the heart rates are more in line or in, or in tune, there's not as much variance. But again, then once I'm working hard again, we've got uh, the Polar Ignite at 160, and at the same time, uh, the Vantage V with the external heart rate monitor uh, is at 126. Uh, and that feels like a little low, but there was definitely a point when it started raining really hard up there on the mountain. Um, I couldn't see what I was doing, and I was going down slippery, smooth rocks. And so um, I was doing a lot, I was doing more walking downhill today than I was uphill. So it was a really interesting, peculiar run. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of hiking up here. I uh, managed to forget a headlamp and I'm now getting into the clouds. Not that I'm that high up, but we got some rain here in the desert today somehow. And I thought as I got higher up, you know, I'd see the sunrise earlier and earlier, but with this cloud cover, I just don't know. <sighs> now let's look at uh, the distance. As far as the distances go, uh, they were pretty close. The distance on the Polar Ignite is gonna come from its GPS uh, tracking. Uh, the distance on the Polar Vantage V, because it's connected to a foot pod, is gonna come from the foot pod itself. And so in this situation, it looks like the Polar Ignite underreported some of my distances. So I told you I have 4.96 miles on the day, but the Polar Vantage V with the Stride foot pod actually gave me um, 0.23 kilometers more than that. So I think it was about 5.11 miles is what I had for the day. So quite a bit of difference there. And I'm gonna attribute a lot of that to the fact that I was not running like on a regular road. Sometimes I was doubling back on switchbacks uh, because the, the hills got pretty steep there or because I got lost and I had to quickly turn around and then go a different way or whatever happened on that particular run. Uh, I think that the foot pod is accurately, more accurately able to track what I'm doing versus the GPS, which may, depending on how frequently it's pinging or how frequently it's reading from uh, the satellite, might not be getting a complete accurate reading of what I'm doing at the, at the exact moment. In terms of elevation, the Polar Vantage V has, and I always figure out which one is the meter and which one is the something trick. So it's either altimetric barometer or barometric altimeter. I can't remember, uh, but it's giving me its own reading of altitude. The altitude that's coming from the Polar Ignite, I believe is coming from GPS. So we have a little bit of a difference here and it's not as big as substantial of a difference as I thought. Granted, I'm on uh, a hilly rock where there's nothing blocking my uh, kind of connection or readability to the GPS satellites. So it kind of makes sense that it worked out really well, but there are certainly times where the GPS sensor and what the watch are telling me are quite different. Here on this graph, uh, on basically on the way up, it looked like uh, the Ignite was under-reporting my altitude and on the way down, uh, for the most part, it was the opposite where the Ignite was over-reporting my altitude. But in either event, it did a pretty good job of capturing both. Um, of, of capturing the altitude from a general kind of like how low did I start at and pretty much how high did I get to. So I was actually pretty impressed with that. And then the last thing we'll take a look at are the um, two GPS tracings themselves so we can get a little bit closer in terms of the two watches. And they're relatively close and I think close enough that you can see why it was only 0.23 of a kilometer over 8K, uh, why they were, they were different. So pretty impressed with the way that the Polar Ignite handled itself by itself without an external heart rate monitor and without an external foot pod. So there's some other data that I also wanna look at. And now I wanna take a look at a run from March 6th where I just used the Polar Ignite, but I was able to use it with the external heart rate monitor. And so if you look at the heart rate, it's getting me exactly kind of what I would expect to get in terms of what my body was feeling uh, on just a regular, easy run out there where the heart rate was pretty constant uh, and didn't see massive spikes, but there weren't massive spikes in energy expenditure either. So it's doing a really good job of being able to get the data from the external heart rate monitor. It does that just fine. Uh, in terms of that run, it was a 4.82 mile run. This was a quick run. 
uh, to work. I was running a little bit late on that particular morning, nine minutes, eight seconds per mile uh, for the pace and 137 beats per minute. This one was a particularly tough GPS test. So a lot of times I talk about the need for foot pods because of the fact that if you run in an urban area, the skyscrapers make it really hard for the signals to get you a clean signal. And so that's exactly what I'm seeing on this particular run as well, as I'm cutting through uh, some of the downtown area in Chicago, uh, it's kind of this, the GPS signal is losing me and it looks like I'm running through and across blocks really quickly. And it even ends up with a point where I think that it had my pace uh, at like two minutes, 26 seconds per mile pace, which is, physically impossible for a human to do, uh, not, never mind impossible for me to do. Uh, and so that's just uh, what happens. Those of you who have run the Chicago Marathon or have run a race in an urban area or through an urban area with very tall buildings have experienced the same thing and that's what's going on here. Um, so overall, I do think it's doing a really good job in terms of the GPS accuracy, um, but it's not perfect. So here's another shot, a, a different run. Um, and this is from uh, February 26th in terms of the GPS that was uh, being traced between the Ignite and the Vantage V. Uh, and so you could see there are some discrepancies there with the Ignite having me running through the water a little bit. That particular point of the run is difficult because I'm running on the lower level of a bridge or there's two levels of a bridge and I'm running under the overhang of it. And so like I'm physically blocked from the top in terms of the um, getting a GPS signal and so it's trying to do its best and give me something and what it's giving me is a data point that's very very far from where I actually was and so that's giving me a little bit of discrepancy there um, but in terms of what else happened on that day comparing the two devices um, here's where I had to I think some of the calibration of the watch uh, ended up being messed up so when I uploaded both of these data that when I uploaded both of these runs to like the Polar Flow app, it showed them as being the exact same time. So I know they're the exact same run, but when then I exported that data to a .tcx file and put them through this analyzer tool, um, the times came out very different. And so it's gonna look a little bit weird because one graph is to the left and one is on the right. So you kind of have to like mentally superimpose the two, but I think that the differences are so stark that you can kind of see easily the differences that I'm experiencing with these types of run. So on this February 22nd run, in terms of elevation, on the right-hand side, you have that one that doesn't show a lot of variation. That is the um, Polar Vantage V and the data that's coming directly from the watch and its measurements. And then on the left-hand side, you have that crazy graph that looks like I went from like 230 meters up down to like 150 meters. So a lot of elevation change in comparison to what the Vantage V gave me. And that's coming from the Ignite and that's coming from the GPS measurements. So I think that as I'm going through different parts of the city, it's giving me like what the altitude is for some other part of the city. I don't know if it's giving me altitude reading it from the top of a building or I'm not exactly sure why it's so off but I've seen it on other people's like Garmin watches and Polar watches too, when they're running through like downtown Chicago, sometimes it'll look like they did like a 1000 foot climb in like a quarter of a mile. And that just doesn't exist anywhere in Chicago. I think it's because the GPS altitude data is coming from like the top of a building. That's my, my theory. The next thing I'll look at is heart rate. So February 22nd was a tempo run. It looks like I had six tempo intervals there. And you can see that pretty clearly on the right hand side with the Vantage V that was paired with the OH1 heart rate monitor. And the really just crazy tracing on the left is from the Polar Ignite. And it's doing its best to be a wrist based optical heart rate sensors on a running watch when you're actually running. This is kind of like what the data looks like. Uh, but that's generally the difference that I've seen so far on just a couple of data points. I've had a couple of other data points that I've been running with this watch and training with this watch and kind of figuring out how it, how it works with some of the sensors that I work with. And overall, I think that this watch is really perfect for someone who is thinking about a smartwatch or a GPS watch, I'm not sure. And if you wanna get something that's a little bit more GPS watch, maybe you wanna get something that's not a square watch face, uh, then this is gonna be a pretty nice introduction into that world, because you're gonna get that beautiful screen that you can touch and then you can get data from and interact with. Um, and you're gonna get access to the Flow, uh, Polar Flow, which I think is a really great analytical tool. I've been really enjoying running with it and analyzing some of my data with it. So uh, that's something that you get access to at a relatively cheap 
entry point. But I think because I like to run with a lot of external sensors, the external heart rate monitor, and especially the foot pod, it's not exactly the watch for me. So those are my thoughts on the Polar Ignite. Let me know if you have any questions about it in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. Uh, before I go, I do wanna remind you guys about the charity runner for this week. This week, it's Stephanie Ryan, uh, who's running the Boston Marathon, or hopefully is running the Boston Marathon, not because of her, but hopefully the Boston Marathon will get run. Uh, and she's raising money for UNICEF. So I was happy to donate $70 of my money to her fundraising efforts. And so many of you guys have followed too, and I wanna take a second to recognize you guys as well. So since the last time that I recognized a lot of you guys already, uh, there have been even more people who have donated. We've had Racing IG with $10. We've had Alpi Team Kofuzi hashtag with $10. Alpi is the first person who ever bought uh, Kofuzi merch, uh, so or one of the first, maybe not the first, but one of for sure. Um, with ten dollars, Ben Tarod coming in with eleven. Jay Kuzar, who I think that's a new name. I haven't seen you before, at least I don't remember seeing you before. I, for, I apologize and forgive me if you have donated already. But coming in with fifty bucks, coming in strong. Thank you so much, uh, Adam Dodd with ten dollars. I think that's also a new name as well. Welcome, Adam. So glad to have you joining us as uh, a supporter of the Charity Runner of the Week. Farrah E coming in again at 10 bucks. Kyle Chang with $25, I think that's a new name as well. Peter Y with 20, good to see you again, Peter. Pivo, good to see you again with $50, that's amazing. And Jennifer R, I think that's a new name as well with $10. Thank you so much to all the new names that are here. It's so gratifying to see the new names as well as the familiar names in here uh, donating and supporting your fellow runners. Uh, further proof of all the good work that we can do when we run together as a pack. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Be safe out there, stay healthy, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?